and welcome to High School Physics Explained and today I'm going to talk about electrical circuits and in particular I'll be starting off with simple circuits and then talking about series and parallel circuits and in doing so I'm going to use an analogy or a model to help you understand and the model I'm going to be referring to is the concept of a slippery slide the first thing is of course is to understand the concept of a model so a model in many ways is supposed to represent something that's complex into more simple terms and so that is a model's strength but it's important to note that a model is by its very nature a simplification which means there are aspects of the model that won't fit the idea accurately so understand that although we will be referring to this in terms of electrical circuits there are aspects of this model that won't accurately represent electrical circuits in its truest sense so without much further ado let's talk about it so we have a slippery slide over here and we have a number of people who'd like to run a lap the slippery slide and slide down the slippery slide and they do this for a certain period of time and I decide to bring in two people who are interested in measuring certain things about the slippery slide. And the first person who's going to come along is Amy. Now, Amy is a person who's interested in counting people and she's interested in how many people are passing through her slippery slide or around the slippery slide at any particular time. And so let's say she does a count and see how many people passes her every hour. So let's Amy stands here and let's say she gets 50 people per hour. I think most of you would appreciate the fact that if she were to stand here, she's going to get the same value as long as we're not adding any people. So our model allows only for people within the loop, so to speak. And so if Amy were to go on top of the slippery slide, she would get the same value. So no matter where she's along the slide, she's going to get the same value. I'm going to also bring Victor along. Now, Victor is not interested in uh, how many people he's interested in basically in terms of the thrill seeking is the in terms of the height and of course the higher you go the faster they're going to go down so he's interested in energy and the way he measures energy is he measures how much height they gain but he's interested how much energy each person gains he's not interested in the lot he's just interested in just each person and so what he does is he measures how much let's say freddie climbs up the stairs and that's the particular height that he measures and then he measures also how much freddie will drop and he measures the drop that he takes goes down clearly the values he gets will be exactly the same except for one minor difference you see over here freddie if victor measures this measures how much energy he has gained and so he may get some value over here but of course over here it's how much energy freddie has lost so if he were to get a value of 10 on this side then this is a value still of 10 but it actually be negative 10 because it's a loss of energy not a gain of energy so that's victor and amy amy measuring how many people are passing in a particular particular time and victor measuring how much energy is gained or lost by any particular member along the slippery slide well let's now translate that to our electrical circuit and an electrical circuit our simple circuit consists of a conductor with a power source a battery or a cell and over here a resistor and a resistor converts electrical energy into other forms uh, mainly heat and light and sound as, as some of some examples so what can we measure here well let's bring our ammeter along and our ammeter and I hope you can see the relationship to ammeter and Amy is interested in the rate of flow of charge and so here's my ammeter and as a result uh, our ammeter is a measurement of how many electrons are passing or what's to be correct how much how many coulombs of charge are flowing at any given time and in this case per second now if I put my ammeter here I'm going to get the same value as if I put my value ammeter here or here or anywhere along the circuit. It's the same value. So for a simple circuit, then it's pretty easy to understand that the current is the same everywhere. So we can say the current is constant because basically it's going to be the same value all the way through the circuit. Now, what happens though if I get a voltmeter? A voltmeter is a measurement of potential and potential is the amount of energy gained per unit charge. So if you want it to be strict, the voltage is equal to 
the energy divided by how much charge. Now, in this case, if the voltmeter is placed over here, we will get how much energy is gained over here. So let's say it's 12 volts. So 12 volt means I'm getting 12 joules of energy per charge over here. If I were to move my voltmeter over here, then I'm going to get the same value. But instead of 12, I'll get negative 12. As a result, because I have here a gain of energy and here I have a loss of energy. Now, strictly speaking, it's not loss of energy. It doesn't disappear out of the universe. It's converted to other forms. As I said, light, heat, sound, and so forth. Just like a person climbing up the slippery slide, they gain a potential energy and the energy is transformed into other forms of energy. Kinetic energy, uh, obviously with a bit of friction burn on the backsides over here, a bit of heat energy and so forth. But nonetheless, the energy has been transformed and the amount of gain is the equal the amount transformed. So that gives you a simplified view of a simple circuit where our voltmeter is our victor and our ammeter is our amy and the voltmeter measures amount of energy per bit and our ammeter measures how much is flowing per second in this case. That's a simple circuit. What about a series circuit? Okay, well here I have my slide again and here again I have Amy and Victor who are going to help me to do some measurements. And so the first person is Amy and in this case the person goes up the slide, let's say Freddie goes up the slide and we see Freddie drop three times. Okay, three small drops as opposed to one big drop. And so Amy is going to measure the rate of people including Freddie, as they go around. Now, I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to work out that if Amy were to stand here and measure how many people are passing every hour, she'd get the same value here and here and anywhere along the line. It's constant throughout. Whereas Victor, well, if he measures the gain, that's fine. That is equal to the energy lost. But Victor discovers something else. He could also measure the drop over here and the drop over here and the drop over here clearly those three drops must add up to the gain. So for example, if the platform is 10 meters high and this drop was two meters and this drop was four meters, it's not hard to work out that this must be the remaining four meter drop. In other words, the drops must add up to the amount that is gained and the drops obviously equals to the total drop because the up must equal the down. So let's have a look at a series circuit. Our series circuit has a voltage supply and here we have three resistors. Those resistors may not necessarily be the same value. First of all, let's bring our ammeter in. If I were to place my ammeter here or my ammeter here or my ammeter here or my ammeter here, it doesn't matter. The current is constant. So really important. Number one, if you've got a series circuit, the current along the circuit is constant. It does not change. But what about now if I to talk about voltage? Now over here I have my voltmeter which measures the amount of energy we gained and over here I get a particular value. I get let's say a value V. But what happens if I measure the value over here and then also measure the value subsequently of here and also here? Now what will happen? Well, let's give numbers to this. Let's say the drop over here, over here, and I'll draw a straw of voltmeter over here, and that ends up being three volts. What happens over here is another voltage drop, and in this case, I get four volts. Now, what if I told you that the input here was 10 volts? What would be true about this one over here? Well, it's clearly understood that the drops in this case must equal the amount gained because you can't lose energy, you can't gain energy, only energy is transformed and so therefore the input must equal to the output, the up must equal the down and so it's pretty clear that this is going to be 3 volts. So therefore it's important to understand that the voltages add. So the total voltage is equal to the sum of the individual voltages that you have in your circuit. And of course, if you've got more, you can add more. So this is V1 and this is V2 and this is V3. So there's the important thing about series circuits. The current remains constant. 
but the voltage drops are at each particular device has to equal to the total voltage drop and that equals of course the total voltage gain over here. Lastly let's look at this circuit and over here I have a slide that has two slides but in this case I have two separate slides. In this case what we're going to see is we're going to see something different to a series circuit. Because I've added an extra slide, the slide operator now has the capacity to hold more people. And how does that work? Well, first of all, let's talk about Amy. Let's say if Amy were to measure the amount of people passing here per hour, would that be the same as here and here? Well, clearly not. Because clearly, if someone goes down this slide, they can't go down this slide at the same time. They can go down one slide or the other slide, but not both at the same time. But lo and behold, if Amy were to do measurements and she said, look, if I stand over here and I basically get, uh, let's say, 25 passing per hour and over here I get 30 passing per hour, how many people are going up the slide? Well, clearly that's going to be the sum total of this, in this case, 55 per hour. So the actual amount of people running down each individual slide must equal to the sum going up the slide. Now what about if I take Victor along? Now Victor's going to measure the height gain, but clearly the height drop is the same as the gain over here, and the height drop over here is the same over here. So Victor will discover that whatever value he gets in terms of the energy gain is equal to the energy loss of these individual slides. So what about a parallel circuit here? So here we have the same idea, but this time you've got a voltage supply over here, which we will call VT. And over here we have, obviously there's going to be an energy loss, which we can call over here V1. And over here the voltage dropped V2. Now going to Victor, what do we establish? Well, these three things must stay the same. So for a parallel circuit, it's important to understand that the voltage remains constant. It does not change for a purely parallel circuit. But what about Amy? What about our ammeter? So let's get our three ammeters and we get ammeter number one and we're going to put ammeter number one right here and it's just measuring the current that is flowing through this arm. Then we've got ammeter number two and this is just measuring the current through this arm. And then we've got ammeter number three and that only measures that current. And you can see this one over here is the sum total of these two. This is like the one just prior to going up the slide. And so as a result, in terms of current, the current adds. And so current, which is the symbol that we use is I, adds up. In other words, the total current I subscript T must equal to the sum of the individual currents. Now, if I have more resistors, that would add up as well. But nonetheless, the currents add up. So there you have it. In a series circle, the currents remain constant and the voltage adds up. In a parallel circuit, it's the voltage that remains current, but the currents add up. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of voltage, current, series and parallel circuits. Thanks for listening. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.